Hello, welcome to Her Wild Side Hockey Podcast. I am your hostess, Mickey, aka Hockey She Wrote on social media, where you can find me sometimes, <laughs> something I'm working on. Uh, but here we are. We are one week up from Christmas as I record this. I don't understand how we are this far, both in December and the NHL season. I feel like we should not be. Part of that is also because I am not prepared. I have wrapped zero gifts. I have bought most of them, so that's good. But I have wrapped none of them. My tree is only half decorated. I have not baked anything. And the worst of all is that there is no snow outside. There is zero snow. I live in Minnesota. And I know, I know, the, oh, but, you know, having a brown Christmas, it happens every seven years or I don't know what the statistics are, but I'm just, I'm so a little bummed. Like, that's what I want. It's a white Christmas. It's why I live in Minnesota. I live in Minnesota because I like snow. But you know what? It is what it is. And we will get through the holiday season together, everybody. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to touch again on the goalie situation on this little back-to-back road trip that the wild are on because I just, I see, I mean, there's a lot of contention right now online about it and I get it. I totally get it. Um, Marc-Andre Fleury was a very important part of the Pittsburgh Penguins for a long time. I understand that, you know, he still has fans there and he has fans everywhere, first of all, because he is just the nicest guy, but he made such an impact on Penns fans that I understand why they're they're upset that he's not playing. And then it made, you know, and then, so then we found out that he does not like to play there as a visitor, which I would understand. I mean, it feels like it would be like feeling like going into your, um, I don't know, if you get along with your parents, like going into your parents' house with this house that you still love and like seeing things off the wall and smashing it. That's what I feel like he would feel like. But Either way, and he said that he was a little upset. And then people got a little, a little upset about his little upset. And I understand that too. But here's the thing. How is he supposed to answer? I actually think that's the perfect answer. Um, It shows Pittsburgh fans that he does, you know, he likes Pittsburgh. He likes being there. He likes the fans. But... He just doesn't want to play there. You know, it just, it doesn't feel right for him. And so I am hoping that he was part of this decision. Um, Coach John Hines said that this was just part of the plan because they're on a back-to-back trip here. And again, it's, John Hines is not going to explicitly state like, oh, we had a meeting and this is what was said and this is how we decided and this is how, you know, that's, we're not going to get that. But I would like to think that, Flurry's thoughts, feelings, emotions were taken into account with this decision. And then there's the other side of it, kind of away from the history part, which is that, you know, it makes total sense that they're going to, they're going to ride Gustafson while he's hot. He is on a hot streak. He has been doing amazing. You might as well keep going with him. Yes. Um, especially there's a back-to-back. So then you know that they're going to have Gus one night. They're going to Flurry the other night. That's just how it's going to work because you don't want to burn Gus out. But it makes a little, it makes it a little weird when tonight they're against the Pittsburgh Penguins, who are not doing so hot, and then tomorrow it's the Boston Bruins, who are doing hot. So they decided to put Gustafson in net for the Penguins because that's the game they're more likely to win versus against the Bruins. But at that point, it's like then why wouldn't you put the goalie that's been playing a little better in against the harder team and try to win both of them? I I don't really understand that side of it. And, you know, Flurry's to this point where he only needs, I think we're at four wins so that he moves um, above Patrick Waugh and, uh, you know, does gets, uh, what, second most wins by a goalie. So I had to think about there's so many statistics and stuff that it's sometimes it gets a little, a little blue. Um, so that's kind of my thoughts. The other kind of analogy that I had was it's a little bit like you're in some kind of a competition, 
you and your best friend, you're competing. You're in a spelling bee. I don't know. We're in a spelling bee. And you get towards the end and um, your friend ends up winning. That's really hard for you, right? Because like you, you would be a little upset. But at the same time, you're happy for your friend. You know, so it's kind of having those conflicting feelings. I, I feel like that's maybe kind of what Flurry is going through. And no matter what, we are not privy to the, the background information of all of this. We have no idea exactly how they made this decision. So I think we just need to move on. But I wanted to talk about that first because that has been just a big thing, a big issue on Twitter today. Um, next, I have a few announcements, which is I kind of was talking about this a little bit during my last podcast, but the Her Wild Side Hockey podcast will have merch coming soon, which I am really excited about. One of the things I want to do um, in this next, you know, we're coming on to a, a new calendar year and I really want to grow. Um, I hate saying my brand, but, you know, grow kind of what I do within the hockey world. And some of some of those are, are ways like like merch. Like I l- would love to have, you know, people excited to wear something that goes with my podcast because I do work hard on it. Uh, and at the same time, I'm also just looking for ways to expand um, my revenue streams because I love doing this and I would love to be able to make more money to support my family doing this. So it's not so much that I'm like, "Mm, money, money, money. I, you know, it just, people need to be paid what they're worth. And so I'm working really hard to be worth more so I can figure that out. So, and again, this goes with, I have so many ideas for this new year. I have no idea what I actually am going to do, but my brain has just gone wild with like, you know, some people have Patreons. Some people do kind of like exclusive uh, live streams with, listeners or, um, I know there's all sorts of like, um, other ways to have people like tip, tip you. Um, I seem, I feel like such an old person right now because I just don't even know what it's called. Um, but there's just so many things that I would love to do. And I really want to make sure that I am a good, um, again, there's all these like kind of bougie terms. You know, I don't want to be like a personality, but I want to be someone who brings things that um, are valuable to all of you, both for free and and somehow paid. Anyway, ramble, ramble, ramble. But this is getting back to last week I was talking about, you know, I was wearing my uh, hot girls like hockey hat. And one of the things that we've talked about for the merch for this podcast is a hot girls hockey club merch because again I believe so strongly in hockey is for everyone not in the way that the NHL says they do but in the way where I honestly want to make sure that hockey fandom in particular um since I don't play ho- hockey fandom is welcoming to everyone anyone everyone I want people to feel like they can be here and they can ask questions that's kind of the other thing is I would love to figure out a way that people can ask questions that maybe they feel silly asking someone else. But there are a lot of weird things in hockey that no one is going to understand until it's explained to you. And you can even go online and read article after article after article, and you're still not going to get it. So anyway, uh, once again, I am rambling, but just uh, coming in the new year, probably in the new year, not probably not before since we're all in that like, mm, let's push that to the next year kind of a phase, but Hot Girls Hockey Club, everyone invited. The only way I'd, you know, kick you out is if you're mean. Don't be mean. Moving on to the Canucks game. I was in attendance at the Canucks game. I don't know why I said it like that. I, <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. I wrote it down. I wrote down I was in attendance and I don't know why I was being so formal. Anyway, this was a 78 game and those are always really fun. And I was telling my brother that at the end of the season, someone should look into the stats for just the 78s game and see kind of how they compare to when they're wearing their regular jerseys. Um, that is not a writing assignment that I will take on because I am not a stats person, but I will be pitching it to other people at the end of the season. But it's just an interesting thing to see, like, uh, do they play better with them on? And in that case, then, you know, you have to kind of speculate why is that because it's different 
So like just different energy. Is there something else kind of taking place? I don't know. Uh, so the 78s, it was fun. Uh, my brother has two 78s jerseys, so I get to wear one, which is always great. But the thing I did not like is it's an afternoon game. And I'm sorry, I just do not like afternoon games. You get kind of this weird audience mix of families with young children and very drunk adults. And it's just this very, I don't know, it's this really strange kind of vibe. And then it feels very strange to come out of the Excel Center and it's daylight. I mean, even though it's winter and it's, you know, gray or maybe the sun's going down, but it's still like, it's not the middle of the night. Like it feels like for a night game. Um, but I don't have any notes for this because obviously I was at the game and I was not making notes. I was busy eating nachos, which is a better idea. Uh, but we had Freddie Goodrow. He scored the uh, lone regular edition, regular time, regulation time. There we go. I knew I'd get there, folks. Regulation time goal. Okay. And he needed that goal. He has really struggled. And again, I know people are kind of being down on him. But we have to remember he was injured for a while. And you have to remember that you need to get back in the swing of things. And just emotionally, we all know that he and Dean Evison were very close. And him having to kind of work through Evison leaving, I'm sure has also affected his game. But I am firmly 100% behind Freddie. And I will always be the one making a case for why he deserves a spot on the wild and the contract that he signed. But we get to the shootout, we get all the way through regulation, we get all the way through the um, overtime, we get all the way to the shootout, Zuki scores, and then Gus Bus, he is just back into great form. He looks so much like the Gus Bus that was there at the end of the season last year. And it's so amazing to see because we all knew it was there. So like I said, tonight they are in Pittsburgh and then Boston tomorrow, and then they will come back home. Uh, I did watch the newest Beyond Our Ice episode. I don't know which ep is this episode two, I think, in the series this year. I have to say, and people were saying this, and I kind of held off judgment until I watched it. There's just not a lot of new content within the episode. You know, we we really enjoyed that they were giving great content while the team was actually in Sweden. They were putting up a lot of videos and fun pictures, but it seems like that was all they had. So then they just kind of crunched all of that into an episode. So it was a little disappointing, I have to say. And uh, one complaint I also saw was that there was not as much stuff centered on the Swedish players. And I do have to say that that might have just been because they wanted those players to focus on spending time with their family and friends since they were home. That's kind of what I was assuming. But I have a few things that I want to say. First of all, uh, Philip Gustafson's family, there was like at least half of them wearing the Gus Bus t-shirts. And I just thought that was the cutest thing in the world. I love it. And then Gus is in practice and he talks about how, you know, he, he always likes to chit chat when there's a defenseman back by him and chit chat. I just like it. Also, um, Marcus Felino made a comment that any pastry is good, and I agree. Any pastry is good. Now, we're all about the vibes here. And let me just tell you, that is part of the reason why I have this podcast, because other places, they are not going into the vibes. They're not really going into, or even the like vibes off of the ice. Because my brother and I somehow during the game that we were at got into an argument about Kalen Addison because, you know, I was saying that it was kind of a bummer, you know, losing him. But my point was that uh, picking up Zach Bogosian was a really good idea. That was kind of what I was getting at. My brother was like, no, you shouldn't be mad. He sucked. And I was like, no, but like he had great vibes <laughs> because he did. He had, he had great vibes specifically off of the ice. Uh, but my brother just, he was like, no, no. And he was 
like frustrated that I would even bring that up. So today I had forgotten. I remembered having this argument, but I was like, who are we talking about? Like which player? So I texted him and I was like, Hey, do you remember which player we were arguing about on Saturday at the game? And he was like, Addison. And I said, Oh yeah. Okay. I said, and you know, I wanted to include it on the podcast today, you know, talking about the vibes and stuff. And then my brother is, he was trying to start the argument again. He's like, yeah, well, he sucks on and off the ice. And I, I just dropped it. Um, we finally are both now in our thirties and we finally know how to not have an argument. So as I'm wrapping up here, I am into my future considerations in a bag of pucks, which is miscellaneous things that I have seen that I mostly that I laughed at. It's mostly just stuff I thought was funny. First of all, the Hughes brothers, the, they have the weirdest kind of, I don't want to use the word vibes because I was just talking about vibey stuff, but I mean, that is what it is. They have the, the weirdest kind of vibes. First of all, you know, you've got Jack and Luke on the same team now. And I can't imagine that that always works. Because again, I'm, I'm thinking about, especially at their age, like being on a team with my brother. And that just would not work. We would be like at each other's throats sometimes. And then there, there was, you know, I don't remember which game, but where they ran like full front into each other and fell down, which is par for the course for Jack because he is unable to go for one whole game without having just some absolute Looney Tunes, you know, uh, bottom over tea kettle sort of a fall on the ice. Usually when nobody is around him to have caused it. But just, I, I would, if I was in that situation, I know that I would be so mad at my brother and my brother would be so mad at me. And then at that point, how do you even set it aside? Because they're what, like, they're like 20 years old, 20, 22. I don't know. Maybe they're more mature than I was. But then you have Quinn who is absolutely, he's has such oldest sibling vibes. And I am, I can just identify with him so strongly because he looks like he has the weight of the world on his shoulders. And that is exactly what it's like to be an oldest, specifically an oldest daughter. But then someone else was talking about Jack. So one more thing about Jack. At the game, they had the um, Devils versus uh, Anaheim. It was Anaheim. And, you know, we get one of those where you can see them like chirping each other. And you can very see, like clearly see Jack telling an Anaheim player to scooch along, which is just a, a very interesting choice of words. Um, if I wrote more about the devils, perhaps I would delve into that for my next article. I focus on the wild and specifically, as I have told my editor, my niche is unhinged wild content. That's what I'm here for. But that, having that scooch along was someone had compared that to very Pomeranian energy, like Pomeranian specifically owned by a, a rich woman. And I agree. Uh, moving on. So uh, back to vibes. I, I can't get away from vibes. You, you guys know that. That's what, it's what we're here for. Damon Hunt, first of all, on the ice has been doing really great. It's really fun to see them giving him more and more ice time. It feels like every game he, he's played up here with the Minnesota Wild, he has been given more ice time and more responsibilities. And he has definitely earned it. And I love watching him. And I hope he gets even more tonight. He's supposed to draw in uh, to the lineup tonight next to John Merrill, which I assume then means that Dakota Mermis will be in tomorrow. I mean, we'll wait and see. But he just has these excellent vibes. That, if you can hear that jingling, that's my dog. Um, he has these excellent vibes off of the ice too, where he just seems so chill. Um, he's really into like, he wants to kind of start his own like clothesline. He's got all these cool tattoos. He has a really like really pretty girlfriend who just got back from modeling somewhere in like Asia. I feel like it was Singapore. I don't know, but it's just, you know, him, it's that swagger that he brings. So we also have Jesper Falstead 
who has been named AHL Player of the Week twice. And I was listening to um, Anthony LaPanta and Michael Russo's podcast. And one thing they talked about was at the beginning of the year, he was kind of struggling. He wasn't terrible by any means, but he just was not in fine form. But when he went to Sweden and he kind of spent the trip with two NHL goalies, you know, in Gustafsson and Flurry, and he kind of saw what they do every day, um, how they treat their body, how they feed themselves, you know, how much they sleep and really saw the dedication that they had to sort of a more of a routine. It feels like since then he has been able to kind of put in more work because he realizes what he needs to do. Um, we're expecting him to come up to Minnesota next season. He knows that everybody else knows that. So it feels like now he's putting in more work and more of what he saw the other goalies doing. And that since then he has been the player of the week twice, which is really amazing. Also in the beyond our ice episode for Sweden, at one point they are interviewing Wally and he says, um, this is the most I've smiled in a while. And he is not smiling in the least. He is like, you know, he's the, the, the emoji with the straight line mouth. <laughs> I don't know. It just, it cracks me up. Maybe it's maybe just the whole Swedish thing. Um, someone was talking about sicknesses running through the NHL. And I just wanted to remind everyone of that picture of Sidney Crosby when he had the mumps and he had the giant lump on the side of his face, except he kept saying that he didn't have mumps. It, you know, apparently that just happened to his face. I, you know, go look up that picture if you don't remember, because it, it makes me laugh every time. And one more thing. Um, <laughs> during the Colorado Avalanche game last night, the writer from The Athletic, um, Peter, oh, I don't know his last name. His first name is Peter. Start, last name starts with a B. He at one point tweets, I'm at the urinal, but I heard the goal sound. So they must have scored. <laughs> and like, I guess that's really big dedication. I don't, I, I personally would have waited. I think, you know, if you had one tweet that just wasn't uh, right on the ball, I, I think you could be forgiven. Anyway, it made me laugh especially because uh, someone posted that and then a picture of one of my favorite CDs when I was little, which was now this is what we call music or whatever it's called. But they had put now this is what I call journalism. <laughs> and I love it. All right. Um, my ramblings are done for now. I'll be back in a few days, of course. And uh, for now, I just wanted to say that all of you are beauties. Everyone is welcome in the Hot Girls Hockey Club, and we're all here to keep the vibes immaculate. So until next time.